Hey, you guys. Thank you for listening to the Thought Box Podcast. Uh, first off, please help us grow by subscribing to us on YouTube, liking our page on Facebook, and following us on Twitter. Uh, you can find us at the Thought Box PC. Uh, this episode and every episode so far is brought to you by Spirit Animal Pet Sitting. I still only want to promote services uh, that I would use myself with my dogs. I got two dogs here and, you know, they're my babies and I trust them. And when you go out of town and you need a pet sitter, you know, you can't always just uh, leave them to a friend. You got to leave it to the professional sometimes. And in this case, if you go to Spirit Animal Pet Sitting, it will have everything you need for your furry little friends here in Austin, Texas. Spirit Animal Pet Sitting provides services such as pet photography, pet training, on-site pet sitting, which means they'll come to your home and stay with your pet so your pet feels comfortable while you're gone in your, uh, you know, the comfort of your own home here. And uh, something that makes them stand out a lot more than the others, Canine Campout. And what Canine Campout is, is it's a vacation for your pup. A lot of dogs spend too much time in the house, and if you're busy working a full-time job or you just don't want to go outside, you're not the outdoorsy kind of person, this gives your pet a chance to be healthy and a good chance to get out and stretch their legs and get some healthy exercise. Your pet will go on a uh, little camping retreat uh, where they can hike, swim, and most importantly, be outdoors in nature, uh, handled by dog professionals. And... uh, uh, your dog's going to have a great time. It's going to be good for your dog's mental, physical. Uh, it'll be good for you because you'll be able to go on whatever vacation you want to go on or just sit on the couch and watch Netflix, whatever you want to do. Regardless, if this sounds something you might be uh, interested in. Oh, i got to add to uh, this will all be documented uh, in a little pet uh, photo shoot to uh, to show their, uh, their little adventure that you guys get to go on here. So uh, hurry up and get to spiritanimalpetsitting.com for more contact information. Uh, today, we get my buddy Jeff Hughes on uh, on the podcast. He's going to tell us a little bit about SEER training. Uh, I'm super excited about this. Uh, and he's uh, about to roll in here in about a half an hour or so. So stay tuned and uh, it's going to be a good show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Thought Box podcast. Today we have my buddy over here, Jeff Hughes. Uh, Jeff has done quite a bit. Uh, just to uh, put a brief little intro here, uh, he's a retired chief hospital corpsman in the Navy for the past 22 years. Uh, he was a SEER training uh, coordinator, would you call instructor. it? Instructor. Instructor. Yeah. Instructor for three years, and he's traveled all over the world, riding motorcycles in China and Doing all kinds of things. Uh, also, currently an RN working towards his master's degree. <laughs> He's a little bit of a busy guy here. Yeah. But uh, he came over here to, to come talk to me a little bit on the podcast. How are you doing today? Pretty good, man. How are you doing? Uh, you Thanks know, for being be here. Better. Yeah, Thanks yeah, thank for the you. awesome beer. Thank Very you nice. for showing up. Show, thank you for showing up. We've got a Infamous Brewing Company. Infamous Brewing. Infamous. Is that a local? It must be. I didn't Brewed in really Austin, Texas. Yeah, there, it is. Yeah. there it is. It's pretty delicious. Cheers. Good, sir. Yes. All right. So, yeah. what I wanted to... Act, act local, drink the local. That's right. You've got to support us. Support the local. I already said Okay. There we go. All right. So, what I what I was really curious about is this SEER training that you went to. Uh, basically, for those of you listening that don't know, SEER training is survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. Uh, focuses on survival and evasion. True. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and the skills that are taught include woodcraft, uh, wilderness survival, yep. all types of different climate that you have to be prepared for, emergency first aid. Land navigation, camouflage techniques, methods of a bit. The list is huge. The list is huge. And you taught this for three yes. years. How did you get into teaching this? <laughs> I was on a frigate uh, from 97 to 2000 by myself because I was independent duty. So I was the only medical guy on a frigate, which okay. is a fucking awesome job. It really is. Um, I was doing for orders. I looked at them. Um, I looked at what they offered me. One of them was, it said, uh, and you know how the military loves acronyms, <laughs> Phaso Trade Group Pack. I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And then I looked into it and I went, oh, I think that's Sears School. And so I asked and they said, yeah, that's Sears School. You'd be there as an instructor. I went, okay. I actually got a friend of mine that went there. Is there right now as an instructor. Okay. Um, and, and then I asked, I said, do I have to go through the school? Before I can teach it. And they're like, everybody who teaches goes through the school. You got to experience it. You got to go through it. And you get get 
you get the, you get the full meal deal. And mm-hmm. it, it's they yeah. don't hold back a little bit. No, you're there be, is you no put holding back. In fact, you may get a little bit extra. Oh wow! Yeah, make sure you're tougher than the rest. Mm-hmm. Now, now I'm going to be intentionally vague. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I can't tell you because there's stuff is classified, classified all over. Okay, and then there's also stuff that I don't want to put out too much information because if anybody is who's watching or listening to this is getting ready to go to the school or has the potential for going to the school. I don't want to give them any kind of information that could be considered a tip off, and, and that's what the instructors we used to call that getting gouged. Okay. You know, um, and if you're gouged, you go in there with all these preconceptions. And as instructors, we could always tell in a second who was gouged, mm-hmm. and then we would switch it up. And they do this thinking they'd have a little bit of an upper hand, exactly. Thinking that they made they'd make their experience yeah. a little less. Yeah. They uh, make it a little easier for themselves yeah. by getting as much, trying to gather as much information. Because it's hard. Because it's it's over thirty days, is it? No, no, it's two no? weeks. Two, two weeks. Two weeks. That part I can tell you. It's two okay. weeks. Uh, it's a week in the. It's a week of um, classroom and a week of field. Okay. Yeah. The. You know, you're not doing yourself any any favors by being gouged um you know because like i said you did people want to do it because they'll they think it'll make it easier for them mm-hmm. and and we can spot that a mile away and then we switch it up when we notice that and mm-hmm. it blows them out of the water and, and we've actually like had people else. they haven't been successful because because of that so mm-hmm. that's what i'm going to be really vague about okay um so anything you've heard about sir fucking forget it because <laughs> it's probably not true and there's a lot of myths you know there's a lot of myths that have grown up about it and um you know what are some of the the myths that uh some of them i don't want to repeat a lot of them because a lot of them they're just fucking stupid Mm -hmm. um but you know just pay no attention to them go in there with an open mind go in there as a blank slate we'll write the information on the slate that needs to be you know there we go ladies and gentlemen the only way you're going to get to know what was really about seer training is if you go, go through, through it, training. you got to exactly. do it. But we're going to touch on what we can touch on today because yeah. it's some pretty, it's yeah. pretty, it's bananas. It's pretty yeah. crazy. Not everybody can do seer training. Not, not everybody can do it. It's for people that are for, uh, it, it. not everybody goes through it. It's for people that are high risk of capture. Mm-hmm. Uh, pilots, air crew, uh, special forces, Navy special forces such as SEALs, uh, Marine Force Recon, uh, special boats, mm-hmm. anybody that's going to be, the potential for being behind the lines at any time, like pilots, they get shot down. Um, people that operate behind the lines, like like SEALs. Mm-hmm. Uh, s- special boat guys who are everywhere, you know, in their little go-fast boats with all the machine guns on them, which is an awesome <laughs> job. Just as a sidebar, I always wanted to fucking do that. Ever since I saw Apocalypse Now as a yeah. kid, I wanted to ride on a fucking motor... Po- I'm one of those uh, PBRs. For real. For real. Yeah. I always wanted to do that, and then... By the time I went in the Navy, those things were gone. Okay. Or they were being phased out. Yeah. And they finally brought Riverine Navy back right around the time I was getting ready to retire. So, Uh-oh. Fuck. It's too late. It's too, too late. You mi- know, missed the like, boat. Yeah. No pun intended. No, literally. <laughs> missed the fucking boat. Absolutely. <laughs> you know. Uh, but anybody that's going to be in one of those one of those positions does it, goes through it. Um, we've even had uh, we've even had tra- we've had guys come in. We've had SAS come in for training. Um, we, we, we trained some Canadian SAS guys back in 02 because their training area in Canada was under eight feet of snow and they were getting spun up to go to uh, wow. they're getting spun up to go to Afghanistan mm-hmm. but uh, they do they they train on the British model so they bought a bunch of Brits in and they do it they do the field craft pretty much the same well they would already done the field craft but they they're the resistance training part of it they do it differently and it was it was a real pleasure to work with them the way they do it because they do it differently than we do and uh, I don't want to give anything away from there, but, you know, I'm, I'm English by birth, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, getting to work with some Brits was fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> because we had a uh, we had a massive piss up when we were done, you know, yeah, which is British slang for a huge. We went out and got hammered. Got a, you know, <laughs> got a right, these, tied one with on these right. Brits. It was great. Yeah. You know, but um, yeah, the let me see the. First week you do academics in the American series. First week is academics. You learn, uh, you get some basics as far as what you're going to, you get the basics of what you're going to be practicing. Mm-hmm. Then you go out to practice it. You know, we do land navigation. Uh, as the corpsman, it was our job. Medical department, we taught the uh, field, the, uh, excuse me, we taught the uh, wilderness medicine portion of it, which was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <coughs> See, I talk too long, I get dry. <laughs> uh, uh, something that, came across my mind is when you're in the week of field 
injuries happen. You're, you right. know, yeah. And that's the other thing that we're out there for. Yeah. yeah. It, what what happens when you have one of your uh, trainees that gets hurt, like uh, like a broken femur in the middle of nowhere? Is there that never happened when I was there, but that has happened before. Mm -hmm. um, we were in a position. Our training area was northeast of San Diego. We had our own helo pad. If anything bad happened, we could get a helo there in probably twenty minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, we would get. During the field phase, most of the things that we saw were, uh, especially in the summertime, we see dehydration. Mm -hmm. People, they just wouldn't drink enough water or they would just sweat it out. And, you know, we'd stick a line in them, put a bag in, you know, put a bag of saline into them, maybe a bag of LR. And yeah. then uh, most of the time we'd return them to training. We had a couple of people got dropped for injuries like uh, corneal abrasions, you know. Um, I'm trying to think what the worst injury we had was. Uh, we had guys get lacerated that need I mean we were, we would stitch them up and put them right back in training Just ready to go again boom yeah yep mine's mine's you know. well I mean you're only gonna you're I mean gonna corman, get even yeah. basic basic navy corman know how to suture yeah you know that's nothing that so you don't have to be a doctor in the navy yeah, to stitch people up you, you know most corman know how to do it mm -hmm. and uh, suturing's a lot of fun I've always I learned how to suture when I was 18 and I've yeah. never forgotten it was <laughs> great you know? it's pretty cool there's a technique yeah. to it it's an art almost it is an art. yeah it is got to be and, be good at it and as a nurse I have to be a nurse practitioner to do it which is one of the reasons I'm Taking, I'm going more school, right more now. school, more school, more school. Yeah, yeah. Fifty-one years old. I'm in graduate school. So. <laughs> Does really? it ever end? Does it ever end? After this? Yeah. Well, this is the thing. When I went for the indoc, they asked. You no, know, I asked. There's a, you know, there's a doctorate that you mm -hmm. can get in nursing, and they asked. Uh, they asked me, would you be interested in getting a doctorate in nursing practice? And I went. Ask me in two years. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Right now, I ain't we'll committing see. a damn we'll thing. See, right? I would like to get done with school and go out and work in first the field. First things first. You know. Get a, get a little bit of a normal life going on. Yeah, exactly. you, you got a lot of irons in the fire right now. Uh, how many people during these uh, the field part would be weaned out? You know, like very rarely we would get a few that were just like, nah, you know what? I don't want to do this. I'm done. I'm mm -hmm. leaving. You know, that, I think that happened the three years I was at, maybe three or four times. Yeah. You know, because for a lot, most people passing, well, for everybody, passing SEER is a requirement for their job. If You can't be a Navy pilot unless you go through SEER. Yeah, these guys already have their wings, but if they don't pass SEER, they're not flying. Yeah, you know? and it makes and sense. Seals, yeah. SEALs, too. You know, mm -hmm. The SEALs have no trouble with it. I mean, those guys are tough as fucking nails. You know, they're... Uh, you know, they go up there and they have they actually have fun with it. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> is their their camp's a little longer than this? Oh, Buds right? is Jesus Christ! I forgot how long Buds is. Um, but they w they come to us after they're finished with all that shit. Really? Yeah. So they come polished professionals and they. Yeah, a lot of them are. Um, a lot of them, I can't remember what the, what phase in their training we hit we get them at. I don't think they have their Budweisers yet. Mm -hmm. Budweiser is the uh, it's the seal insignia. It's the uh, the eagle on top of a trident with a match lock and a lantern. It looks like the Budweiser eagle. That's why okay. they call it a Budweiser. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure at what point we get them, um, but it, it's we get them. I'm pretty sure we get them before they get that. Actually, yeah, I think I know we do. And uh, it was funny once because um, we were on because our our school is on Coronado. It's at Naval Air Station North Island, and uh, Seal Buds is just down. It's just down Coronado on the water. And I'd gone out with a couple of my guys who were out running on the beach once. And this was in the days when I used to run when I was still a chief and I was still on active duty and I was still in shape and 40 pounds lighter. But that's, <laughs> another, that's another story because, you know, I, I like beer. beer. What? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, we were out running on the beach. We were wearing our SEER instructor shirts. And there was a whole Buds class come shuffling past us in the sand. And uh, we're, we're smart. We're down there on the hard pack running. These guys are in the loose sand in boots, camouflage, mm -hmm. uh, pants, and T-shirts. Shuffling along, kicking up a big cloud of dust. The instructors running alongside them. They've got that little bolt, that little electric bullhorn that they always harass them with. And uh, you know, he sees us running. He sees our shirts, and he goes, "And I, I think he's he's doing this just to fuck with him." He goes, "He goes, typical lands to your left. Those are SEER instructors. When you get done with buds, you got to deal with those assholes. You think <laughs> this is tough?" <laughs> like, we're just trying not to laugh. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> that was excellent. Yeah. Uh, um, tell me a little bit about your world travels. You, uh, you show, or I was looking on your Facebook about yeah. uh, that old school motorcycle. You're a motorcycle guy. You got a. Yeah. You've been riding for a while, but you rode yeah. a motorcycle with a sidecar all around China. Yeah, that was back in '02. I went over with a friend of mine, John, and uh, another friend of ours, Rod, who's a doctor that we work with. And um, we rode these, it's a Changjang 750, and what that is, 
Chinese, uh, mil Chinese military bike with a sidecar. Okay, its lineage is it's the Chinese copy of the Russian Ural, which is the Russian copy of the 38 BMW. Okay. So, 38 BMW, that was when Hitler was still friendly with Stalin. I guess they gave him the plans. So, the Russians what started making the them, and then the Chinese got the thing from them. Anyway, these things are um, tough as a box of hammers. They have a shaft drive. You know, and I know you know bikes. Yeah. So yeah. No chain, no mm -hmm. belt, shaft. Mm -hmm. It's got a drive shaft. Okay. And makes you it, can, that makes it a little more reliable, or a lot more reliable. Tough as a box right? of hammers, too. Yeah. Yeah, you, cannot, you cannot break these things. The, uh, it's got um, the sidecar. You can get them, actually, where the ones we were riding didn't have this, but you can get them, actually, where there's power to the sidecar wheel. So you actually have two-wheel drive for oh, wow. really serious off-road stuff. Yeah. How are the roads over there? I mean, uh, they went from really good to really shitty. Real shitty. Um, yeah, there's. They build a lot, but they don't build well. Mm. Um, they had built these, uh, the equivalent of like you know interstates, that had all these potholes in them, and the just guy not that, maintained. Well, they just don't build them well. Oh, just the, poor quality. Yeah, the guy that was leading it is this uh, Robbie, this Australian guy who's just a fucking maniac. And uh, we're on this road, and the last time he'd run the run a tour down there was two years ago, and he goes, you know, there's potholes and stuff. He goes, two years ago these roads were immaculate. Now they're shit. That's that's and it. And that's why. And they're not going to come through and fix them. And it's just... they do, but it's all patchwork. Yeah. You know, the way to fix things in China is they got over a billion people. They throw throw bodies at the job. Go ahead and fix that. You know. <clears throat> and uh, we rode from the Russian border, uh, the Russian Mongolian border, Russian Mongolian Chinese border. We could actually see Russia. From when we landed, We're yeah, like, yeah, it's Russia. Over here. I was like, "Wow, yeah. I can see Russia from my bike." <laughs> Fuck you, Sarah Palin. I can see Russia from my bike. You know, um, I can see it from Alaska. Well, it's any opportunity to talk to Sarah Palin. <laughs> Fuck you is great for me. Um, so, and you know, it's literally. You know, I told my brother. I sent him a text. I said I could throw a rock and hit Russia. And he comes back with his two word response. One word response. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please don't. Don't do it. Uh, and so, so we yeah. rode south from there all the way. Uh, it was nine mile, nine days of riding, all the way to Beijing. Okay. Um, day before we hit the Great Wall, did some Great Wall stuff. You know, uh, spent a couple of days in Beijing at the end of it. It was pretty cool. We camped out most nights. Uh, every third night, we'd find a hotel. We get a shower. Yeah. You know, get the. To Get the funk off. Yeah. Every night, every night we would have steaks and stuff around the fire. Steaks, ribs, ate well. Ate well. Nice. Um, we would have. Uh, Robbie would always pull out whenever we stopped. Get camp. We set up camp. Camp was great because we had these tents that were uh, instantly deployable. You know, you took it and you threw it up. In the One air. of those throw ones that pops yeah. out. Yeah, those things are fantastic. And I threw a steak it down. Yeah, and you throw your bags in there. Bob's your uncle. You know, the uh, we did a. Um, you know, we would do, like I said, we'd do steaks and stuff at night. He would, every night, he would pull out a flat, a case of Chinese beer, cans of this stuff. How is Chinese beer? This stuff was so weak, you could actually hydrate with it. <laughs> you know. So we have three or four of those. We'd eat. After dinner, we would have, uh, he asked us if we wanted to have Jack Daniels around the fire at night. And no, you know what? We're civilized men. Scotch, please. 18-year-old <laughs> bottle Ooh. of scotch. Was, you know, I don't know. This yeah. guy's stuff was great. Eh, have a knock at that. And by, you know, sitting around a fire, usually after that, by 9 o'clock, we were... Time to go to sleep. Time to, you know, time to have a little nap. Crawl into our bed. Crawl into our. Uh, crawl into our tents. Get in the bags and just crash until morning. And How long do you ride during the days? Um, is it all day thing or is it kind of yeah, sporadic? Usually we'd ride from about. We get up and we'd have a leisurely breakfast. Take off for break camp. Take off around nine. Ride till maybe five six. You know, one bad. How was uh? Did you run into any bad weather around there? We got the very first day was okay. Then we caught up to a big bad rainstorm. Mm -hmm. Had to ride up into the mountains through that. Um, How those bikes doing the rain? They were doing pretty good, except I got a little bit of water inside my throttle, so it was sticking. Mm -hmm. But we had a mechanic with us. Oh, well, that's yeah. That that's so he got on. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, he was like, yeah, okay, just fix that. Yeah. Um, Robbie, the Australian guy that was leading it, had his business partner, Jackie, who's a Chinese national. And he's the guy that actually owns the business. That had, he's he actually the guy that owned the bikes. And they bought Mr. Lin, who was our mechanic, who was a wizard. This guy mm -hmm. was, oh, my God, this guy could fix anything. Yeah. So, um, so you know, I told him what happened. You know, he got in there, fixed it for me, everything. Yeah, the throttle's fine. You know, it's did you have sticking to, anymore. Did you have to utilize the mechanic for any other parts during the trip? Any Anything else break down on um, the beast? There was... 
There was. Because you you kind of there was something major on somebody else's bike you had to fix. If you guys were to have yeah. a, a major breakdown where you guys were riding, would you be kind of screwed for a while? No, or? he actually had all the parts. He actually, and his sidecar was packed with, even he even had a spare engine in there. Wow. His sidecar was worst, packed worst with parts. Worst case scenario, yeah. he was ready to rock. Yeah, because normally when they'd run, bigger tr- they'd run bigger trips, they would bring a, um, they'd like a, it was like an old military vehicle, mm-hmm. you know, that they would bring that had all the spares, and they'd use that. For, but there was, only, there was only three of us riding, so they packed everything into a bike. And he just brought his mechanic shop. It was right there in his life. Actually, on this side, he brought it. It was in his sidecar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. There it is. Yeah. Helped you out. So you ate well. Ate you, well, rode well. Um, How were the people? Awesome. Did the experience? Awesome. awesome uh, we'd experience. pull into these little, uh, for lunch, we'd pull into these, we'd find a town and just find a little restaurant, pull in and have, uh, you know, noodles and dumplings and we got really good at eating boiled peanuts. I'm really good with chopsticks. Now. I didn't used to be. We were eating, to the point where we're eating master, boiled, huh? yeah, to the point where we're eating boiled peanuts with uh, with chopsticks. Really? Yeah. That is that's some skill right there. I'd look, <laughs> we do I'd that. They pull in and they also like, bring us a big bottle of coke, and we sit and have that with lunch. We have dumplings and noodles, and that was awesome. Yeah, you know, food was great. Yeah, uh, breakfast was always good. It was always uh, bacon, eggs, um, sausages, and. This the guys like, in Australia, like they don't eat a lot of fruit, and after about a couple of days, we're like, you know what? We need some apples. You know, we need some oranges. <laughs> need to start getting some fiber yeah. in my diet here. Seriously, <laughs> too much protein. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where else have you been? Because you've been all over tons of. I did. Um, I spent three years on Okinawa um, when I was with my station with the Marines from eighty five to eighty eight, and did. Um, let me see. That's four deployed. Did six deployments off there. Went to mainland Japan. Went to Korea a bunch of times. Went to Thailand. Uh, went to um, the Philippines. All over the place. Did where, where did you enjoy the most out of all the places you were deployed? Of all the places I've been, I think the nicest country, the country I enjoyed the most was New Zealand. I yeah. I like New Zealand a yeah. lot. I really do. It's a place I really like to visit. Yeah. Um, mostly because if you, you see pictures too, and it looks like it's a wallpaper background. It's just yeah. green and beautiful. And then the, I got to the go. Pretty. I got to go to. Um, I got to go to New Zealand in 1990. I was stationed in Key West. Rough, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, I put in to go um, to go temporarily TAD temporarily assigned duty to the Antarctic, okay. And at the time, Navy the Navy was running what was known as Operation Deep Freeze, and they did it from the fifties to uh, the late nineties, maybe in th- early into the twenty first century. Um, and they would do support for the science mission down there. Mm-hmm. And what we would with Navy also manned up the clinic down there. So in not, and apparently they would aug for summer season. Summer season because it's, it's opposite. Summer season down there is winter here. They would augment medical for the summer season because there'd be three thousand people on the continent, which was a lot for Antarctica. <clears throat> they needed extra medical help, so they would okay. augment people for the summer. And um, I put in to go, and I got accepted, and I went down. And you start and you stop from New Zealand because we deploy out of. So I got to spend like three days in New Zealand before I went down. But coming back, it was over a holiday weekend, and they're like, you know, it's the holiday. Everything's going to be shut down until Tuesday. Okay. You know, because we're all That's taking a bummer. 96. And I went, you mean we got to spend four days in New Zealand? And the guy's like, yeah, horrible, right? And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> man, what am I going to do? So the minute they told me that, we went and rented a car, and we rolled, roamed all over the South Island. Okay. You know, um, we went down to Queenstown, which is where uh, – they invented bungee jumping. Yeah. Did you go? Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Jumped off the bridge where they invented How high it. was it? Um, was it one of the monster ones where you look and you pucker instantly? Well, you pu- you pu- you're going to pucker. It ain't happen- <laughs> you know, that's going to happen. Um, I mean, Jesus Christ. Have people are halfway down, you could hear assholes slamming shut up. <laughs> <laughs> was that your first time bungee jumping? Yeah. Yeah. First and only. I haven't done it since Really? Then. Would you yeah. do it again? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. The, um, so, you know, and I, you know, they tied my ankles together and I dove and... You know, got a get a nice swan. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And uh, you bounce a few times, and they bring you into a zodiac. You know, a rubber raft at the bottom, and there's a long set of steps back up to the bridge. I mean, it's high. It's, it's high and it's steep. These uh-huh. stairs. I'm running up these things, and I'm like, I got this coppery taste in my mouth, and I'm like, I thought it bit my tongue. Mm-hmm. No, that was adrenaline. <laughs> I'd never had that much of a charge wow. of adrenaline before. Wow. That it tasted like my mouth. I felt like I had a mouthful of pennies. <laughs> I'm you sure know. your body just dumped every chemical it could just the second you're yeah. falling off yeah. that bridge. And I ran up to the top. I wasn't even winded at the top of it. Yeah, yeah. just like I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Awesome. What else is fun in New Zealand? Um, yeah, four days there. 
Let me see. There was, uh, we did that. We just roamed around and looked at the sights. Any drinking? Your beer guide, you? Yeah, of course. How's, you know, the, how's the, the brews over there? They have a beer over there called Lion Brown, yeah. which is a brown ale, which is so smooth that you would not believe it. I'll take another one. Yeah. <laughs> it's super smooth. And um, I've only ever seen Lion Red in this country, and that was at uh, Trader Joe's in San Diego. Mm -hmm. So I got some. You know, it was good. Oh. But yeah, Kiwi beer is good. They the, do it right. Um, they, it's not rehydration beer. <laughs> no, no, it's real beer. There's, you know, they're set up by the English. The yeah. Brits no beer. I know what's up. Yeah, they the know. Brits no beer. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It's parched there. It's a lot better. Yes. What's uh? What is your beer choice? You've been all over the world with beers here. I'm a. Uh, this stuff is not bad. I don't know if I. I mean. We are completely spoiled for choice nowadays with That's beers. True. There is so much good stuff out there. Yeah. Um. Locally, I mean, God, and we live in Austin. How many brewery, how many breweries are there here? <laughs> you know, they're they're, they're great. Your yeah. options here are almost limitless. Yeah. You'll find I mean, something you like. I'm English. I like uh, I like British beer. I'm a huge Newcastle fan. Yeah, New I actually have a kegerator at home. I've gone through since I got that uh, in when did I get my kegerator? 2008. Mm -hmm. Probably gone through four kegs in Newcastle, mm -hmm. among the others. Um, currently have Sam Adams. Uh, winter or not winter live Sam Adams uh, Boston Lager in there right now yeah. another favorite I'm a New Englander I grew up in New England so love that stuff um, I like um, not a huge IPA fan okay they tend what's to be that little, now why they tend to be a little over hopped for me uh -huh. not a big I, fan of the real hoppy taste yeah and I don't think you should be thirstier when you finish your beer <laughs> than when you start the damn thing so a little bit of hops is okay um you know, I lived in San Diego for a long time. There's some good breweries out there. Um, San Marcos, California, is home of Stone Breweries, who makes Arrogant Bastard. You've had that, right? I, I don't think I have had Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Arrogant Bastard is great. You read the label, and it basically says, put this down. You're not even worthy to pick this up, you fucking idiot, blah, blah, blah. That's what the label <laughs> <Wow>. says. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, yeah, well, I'll show you, and you snatch it up. And that's actually... Um, that's really hoppy, but with that stuff, it works. I mean, if you hold a glass up, you can actually smell the fruit in it. Really? Yeah, it's got a real fruity smell. Mm -hmm. um, that one was actually not bad. But um, as far as a lot of these IPAs just tend to be, you know, it's like how many hops can you jam into the thing? Yeah, yeah. and so what, what is the, the scale of <laughs> IBUs or something bitter units or whatever? Know. And you get pretty busy, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. No I expert like, in that. If you're going to look, if, you know, you look on the beer spectrum, I usually go from Amber's right. So, you know, uh, Amber's, Porter's, Stout's. That kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. How do you feel about the cider beers? I've been noticing a, a big uprising around the area with a bunch of cider beers. I like them personally. They're okay. Can't drink a lot. They're just too sweet. That's, but that Angry Orchard stuff's not bad. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, they tend to be too sweet. That's the one. I, Angry Orchard's okay because it's not overly sweet, mm -hmm. but I still can't drink a lot of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're nice and crisp if you're thirsty. They're not bad. It's like a, it's a good, good fall. It's a good yeah. Texas, uh, you know, you're outside, you need something <laughs> a little bit refreshing. Yeah. Now, my summer beer. Around. I go local for my summer beer, too. I love, uh, my favorite summer beer is the, um, it's the Shiner uh, Ruby Redbird. Ah, great choice. Yeah. Great choice. I could drink that all day, to be yeah. honest. That's my, um, you know, I'm out working in the yard. Yeah. I'm sweating my ass off. I need to sit down. You know, you crack one open in a garage. It's sweating as much as you are. Mm -hmm. you put some tunes <laughs> on. You know, it's all good. Yeah. You know. Uh, so... We gotta we gotta wrap this up here in a few minutes here, right. but I do. Uh, you were talking to me when we first got here. You're starting a show. Yes, you got a show going on. Tell I have me a about show this. Going on. Uh, my buddy James Grow and myself are uh, both retired Navy guys. He is a professional actor by trade. Mm -hmm. With his uh, biggest claim to fame, he was Ron Perlman's stand-in on Sons of Anarchy. Okay. And uh, we were out riding around, stopped in for a beer at this place last summer. And he's like, you know what? We could do this as a TV show. I said, what? He goes, you know, ride around and drink beer. I mean, <laughs> Christ. He goes, most, a lot of, a lot of shows on the, on the, you know, on the travel channel are less than that. Yeah. The old so, they make a TV show about anything yeah. nowadays. So we put the, we put together the quality. idea and the name of the show is Two Old Goats on Hogs. You where know, where old, can we find this show? It's on YouTube. Okay. Okay. And it's 2-O-G-O-H. All right. Um, this is our logo. There it is. Yes. Well we are also like on Twitter. It. We are also on Twitter. What's and your on Twitter Facebook. handle? Two O. He does all the. I don't <laughs> fucking twit. I don't know. Yeah, it's. it's um, I'll, I'll, I'll find them and I'll post them. Two O G O H hashtag fucking whatever. I don't know. I'll, I'll post the links in here so you guys yeah. will be able to find out how to uh, how to view this and uh, how many episodes you guys got. We've gotten our first pilot episode is done. Pilot's and it's done. Just, we've, work, we've been working on it when we can. Um, you know it's. We've started a. Uh, we started last year 
um, we were going to do this one place, and then we, you know, because we go to these places and we review and we hang out, we mm-hmm. drink beer, we eat the food, and then mm-hmm. we say whether we like it or not. Um, there was this one place we checked out that we thought would be cool. We mm-hmm. got in there and it was a fucking pit, and we went, no. Oh, no. And there was another place that we tried out. I'm not going to name the, mention the names of these places. There was another place we tried out where they never got back to us. Mm-hmm. Well, during a rot rally this year, we met this dude and his wife who um, had you know, been on the Facebook page and thought it was cool. So we hooked up with them. They own a Brown's Drive-In in Kerrville. We went out there and filmed our pilot episode. Burgers are fantastic. Yeah. Really good people. <clears throat> our pilot is up on the it's on our Facebook page mm-hmm. okay so people can check that out it's about half an hour um, a lot of riding some voiceover you know that kind of stuff uh, a little bit of drinking beer of course <laughs> and um, you know right now we've got a Kickstarter going mm-hmm. uh, we want to try to raise some money to get some better gear some better cameras some better recording gear just upgrading the quality yeah it's because he puts the whole thing together he does all the editing and he's like you know with the stuff we got this is really tough because we did it with a uh SLR, 35 millimeter SLR, and two GoPros, mm-hmm. and they're the basic GoPros that don't have the viewfinders, so we can't even see what the we can't even see what the video you can't looks see what like you're until seeing. we're done. Yeah, and then we did th- we did that with the uh, we're recording with um, recording software onto an old iPad and on iPhones and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. we want to upgrade the equipment, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll go from there. You gotta go yeah. the GoFundMe going to try to get everything. Yeah. Yep. And we only want about you know. So you know, by all means, kick in. Please throw down some money. Come on, if you like what you, you know. hear, help him out. He's yeah. gonna put together a quality TV show We're for trying. you guys better than the Kardashians' garbage. That's gonna Ooh. fill your <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I hate the fact that I even said it. It's promoting it even more. Ugh, 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 ugh. All right, well, you guys know where to find it, uh, and uh, we're gonna have to wrap this up here. We're right at uh, right at the half hour here. Right. So once again. I had a great time today. I'd Me like too. to have you on another game. Sure. There's going to be more beer to drink. So Excellent. We'll I got plenty out. of bullshit to throw down. <laughs> so, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Thought Box podcast. Please go to our YouTube page and subscribe. Go find us on Facebook. Uh, follow us on Twitter at the Thought Box PC. And go check out. I'll post all the links and all the Twitter handles so you can find Jeff's uh, new TV show and you can support that. Uh, and also, here's the deal. Give me some feedback. What do you guys think of this thing? You know, we're, we're, I'm trying to put together a quality show for you here. If you like it, let me know. If you hate it, let me know. Uh, you know, I want to I want to put this out here so everybody can uh, t- can grow and learn learn some interesting stuff. Thank you for talking to me about SEER training. No Give me everything that you could here. And uh, had a good time. Yeah, me too. All righty. See you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.